This is Game Chat One, episode 128. The hunt for monster performance. Rar, man. Rar. You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 128 of Game Chat with Buona. We got a great show lined up for you. Today is Wednesday, August 1st. What's left of it? I'm recording a little bit late, but... Uh, you know, I got some stuff done today, and uh, I'm happy to announce that I have uh, I have secured a short-term uh, campaign with Quip. Quip is a, uh, a toothbrush. Yes, we're going to be <laughs> partnering with a toothbrush. Very nice toothbrush, and uh, I'm going to be having a deal with them. That's related to my live stream, so if you want to get the links on that, uh, you go over to my live stream at twitch.tv slash Buona. You can either type exclamation point Quip in the chat or you can click on the giant picture of a toothbrush on the channel uh it's not going to be promoted that much on the stream i just want to announce that we're going to be doing that in case you do go over to the live stream you can check it out that's going to be running for about a month and hopefully we'll have some more deals in the pipeline and my goal is to get more episodes of the podcast out so we can have some deals with this show as well game chat one covers the best of the news for the week and hopefully this week's news will get you smiling boys all right let's get to it For our first story, we're going to be talking about Monster Hunter World, and we're going to be talking about Monster Hunter World on the PC. And this game hit the PS4, uh, the consoles pretty much on, yeah, I think it was like early this year, February, January, February, March. I remember I stopped playing it around the March time frame. It was earlier this year. And, you know, I was a little salty because I'm a PC, I'm primarily a PC gamer. And I was like, man, where's the PC version? Because they pre announced this. And uh, I was like, where is it? And it's like, we'll have information on that later this year. And we finally got a release date. Uh, it's going to be August 9th, which is right around the corner. And some prominent content providers out there already have access. And they've already been showing content. I believe their NDA allows them to show up to three hours of content. And um, it's been it's been interesting. So let's talk about the story I, that I want to um, cover first and this has to do with the performance because when it comes to pc you know that's that's main that's the main thing people look at first you know the content of the game the length you know the the quality and all that stuff you know it it, it's, it matters but the first thing people want to know is can my pc run this because consoles have the luxury of not having that issue they you know if, if you get the game for the console generally it will run but people are like okay what are the system requirements what kind of CPU do I need? Do I need a new video card, et cetera, et cetera? So it wasn't very, very good news. It wasn't very good news when people started reporting that even on a decently high end system that they couldn't maintain 60 frames per second at 1080p on the highest settings. Um, and these are the best, uh, according to this article, the best graphics cars out there couldn't handle it. Um, and this article also points out over on Rock, Paper, Shotgun that the game is actually crashing as well. I didn't know that. It was crashing quite a bit. Um, so, you know, the one of the differentiators, and again, this is a this is a game that's running on consoles today. People are happily playing it. I played it for a while. I had fun, but I hit a wall. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and the PC version, I guess the incentive is that, okay, you're going to have multiple input options whether you want to play with keyboard and mouse your own controller you don't have to use whatever the console makes you use etc higher graphical fidelity we're talking 4k people want to go up to 1440p they probably want to run uncapped frame rate and they want to kill monsters in that environment so if you got that incentive you know performance is a very important thing you don't want to have to have the best system on the planet to enjoy the benefits of pc gaming but there's some performance problems already with this early build. So this article points out, and this is kind of where my brain went, went, is that hopefully these will be fixed with a day one patch or day one graphics driver update, et cetera, et cetera. I'll tell you, just based on my experience, that's probably not going to help, probably not going to happen. <laughs> but anyway, Capcom, the reason why I'm talking about this story, they responded to these claims. They said, this is a quote from uh, marketing William Yagi Bacon, 
yes that's his name, weighed in on the subject saying, to eliminate interstitial loading during active gameplay, Monster Hunter World loads the entire level into memory. In addition to managing assets loading into memory, it keeps track of monster interactions, health status, environment object changes, manages LOD and object culling, calculates collision detection and physics simulation, and tons of other background telemetry stuff that you don't see yet requires CPU cycle. This is in addition to supporting any GPU rendering tasks. While in the multi-threaded framework engine has been around for ages, it does a good job of distributing CPU cycles and load balancing tasks across all available cores and threads. The engine itself is optimized for x86 CPU instruction set and is highly scalable as, and loosely speaking is platform agnostic regardless of PC or console platform. So as long as it confirms to the x86 instruction set. Now, pop quiz, do you, do you remember any of that? No, I, I I didn't think so. Um, he's basically saying that it's a bunch of CPU stuff going on, and that they're probably going to try to improve and optimize it, but we're going to be stuck with what we got. That's that's yeah, that's kind of what that's <laughs> that's kind of my takeaway from that. Um, and according to the article, Capcom recommends that you play with one of the Intel eighth generation Coffee Lake CPUs. Uh, the quad core Intel Core i3-8350 to be precise, as they are much better at multitasking. They also mentioned the Ryzen uh, 5 1500X rather than this year's Ryzen 5 2600-2600X. Uh, they recommend the, the 1500X. Uh, traditionally, AMD CPUs have been much better at multitasking than Intel's processors due to have even more cores in their name. So AMD PCs will find themselves better off in this respect compared to the Intel chums. Um, this guy on the article says he'll do his best to, uh, to, to back him with some testing to see how they compare. Again, this is, this is opinion. This is not fact yet. So apparently, according to the, the quote, multi-threading may help. Um, that all this CPU stuff that they have to do, all the checks and balances, multi-threading may help. But I have my skeptical glasses on and I'm going to say it probably is not going to help that much. Now, that's the article. That's the factual part. Let's get to my opinion about Monster Hunter. We're gonna, we got another story about Monster Hunter as well. Uh, I hit a wall with Monster Hunter. Um, I got tired of the fetch quests. I got tired of the, the footprint quests. I really got tired of the tutorial. Um, and I really wanted to just hunt monsters. And I, I was pushed by people. And, you know, this may have been my mistake. I was pushed by people who have gotten past the hump to say I should really, really push past the story and get the story done because that's when the game really opens up and that's when I can really farm monsters in Monster Hunter World. I never got to that point. I was I got so sick of it. I, I was spending hours one Saturday night on my live stream. We were we basically had a night dedicated. It was Saturday nights dedicated to me and the community playing Monster Hunter and trying to make some uh, some progress. I I was I was very very jaded and I was just mad and I just didn't want to do it anymore. It was. I got tired of running around the maps multiple times looking for footprints. I was like, I didn't buy this game for this. I really didn't. And people tell me, well, Bunny, you maybe you'll like Monster Hunter Jelly Bean on the 3DS. And I'm like, I don't know what Monster Hunter Jelly Bean is. I, that's not the name. I'm just making up something. Um, you know, and I, I just got tired of it. And ever since then, I've been playing Dauntless on PC, which is the exact opposite. Everything is hunting monsters. Everything. So I was like, yes, this is what I wanted. So maybe a future Monster Hunter will be like that. Or maybe there is one out there like that that you guys will probably comment and let me know <laughs> is the case. But I hit a wall and I just stopped playing it. So I don't plan on buying Monster Hunter World for PC. And reading this article, given that the weakest component in my current system, given that I have an Intel Core i7-3770K, is that my CPU is going to be a huge bottleneck, a ginormous bottleneck. So I imagine I'm probably going to have to kick it down to 800 by 600 on low settings to even get 60 frames per second. Because if the CPU is the bottleneck, I have a 1080 video card. So the GPU is only going to be able to do so much. Um, if the CPU is the bottleneck, I'm out of gas. The same is true for Final Fantasy 15. I'm even having trouble right now with No Man's Sky, even though I'm loving it. I'm CPU bound. Uh, my CPU pegs really, really, really quickly. So my system is quickly starting to age and I'm starting to feel it. I mean, I've had it for five years. So, I mean, 2012 is when I bought the system. So it's six years now. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was 2012 when I got my current system, my current CPU. So it's, it's going on six years. It's pretty old. So I'm not going to blame the game. My system's just old. But check this story out, guys. This is really close to launch. It's like less than, what, seven days? No, eight days. It's August 9th. Eight days away, and performance problems are being reported everywhere. Are they going to have time to address this, or are people just going to have to deal with it? Check it out, guys. Rock, paper, shotgun. They got the details over there. And for our next story, we're going to continue to talk about Monster Hunter World. And this one has to do with the in-game squads. Now, you may have just heard me talking about some of my um, some of my complaints with Monster Hunter World, namely in the form of the the questing that I had to do in the storyline. I didn't really I wasn't I didn't really enjoy it. The probably the next thing on my complaint list was the partying and the grouping on the PS4. It was clumsy. Just that's the best word I can think of. Uh, there was a lot of hurdles. And the thing that I, 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 I consistently said was that it seems like this game is doing everything in its power to prevent me from playing with people I want to play with. That's what it felt like. It was it was just hurdle after hurdle. But it looks like they're trying to do some cooler things on the PC release. This article comes by way of Destructoid.com is that they're going to be integrating Steam groups on pc now the level of integration is not yet known but what they're showing in this article is that you will represent your primary steam group which you can designate um as an icon in game so when you log into a game you're going to have a little icon next to your uh, name which is going to denote your primary steam group so if you're part of the all things born a steam group, you know, you can rock the smiley face of life and <laughs> just putting that out there. But anyway, um, you can actually go in the game, according to this article on destructory.com and change which group you want to rep. It's really, really cool. So I got to imagine what other things they're going to be integrating with this. Are you going to be able to easily invite people from your steam group? to your game are they going to be able to join on you easily from your steam group i like the idea of that i like the idea of going beyond this friends list of steam because i don't like having to add a ton of people to my friends list but i have an open steam group that people can join and one of the things we used to do back in the tf2 days yes i'm showing my age is that i would join the group chat the steam group chat and people will right click on my name and join my server so I don't have to tell them the server. They just join the chat room, right click on my name in the server and then join the server. So if I were to play Monster Hunter World PC, which I'm not planning to, but if anybody else in my Steam group wanted to join on each other, if they have more and more of this tight integration with Steam groups on PC, that would be a win-win. That would, that would probably alleviate a lot of my concerns with what they're doing with squads on the PS4. So check this story out, guys. Over on Destructoid.com, looks like they're doing some interesting stuff with Monster Hunter World and the Steam integration. Now, I got to wonder, what about other platforms? Does Monster Hunter World only work on Steam? I haven't verified that, but it looks like if they have this kind of deep integration with the game of Steam, it probably will only work. I don't think they're going to have a GOG version, a GOG version, or uh, Origin Access version. I don't know what they're going to have. Uh, let's check it out, guys. Over there on Destructoid, Monster Hunter World has some in-game squad stuff that's related to Steam groups. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Valve and their new card game that you may have heard of called Artifact. Artifact is a, a, a collectible card game. It's not a trading card game because I don't think trading is going to be allowed in it. Uh, oh, actually, it is going to be a TCG according to their press release, which is what I'm going to talk about. It is going to be released on Windows, Mac and Linux, November 28th, 2018. That's the contents of this press release. And on mobile, Android iOS is going to be in 2019. The price is going to be $20. I'm actually glad to hear, pardon me, is glad to hear, that it will have a price. Because a lot of these trading card games and collectible card games, they, you know, they may be free to play. But then you end up having to buy all these card packs in order to compete if that's what you want to do in these types of games. Uh, let me go ahead and read the press release. This is over on Reddit that I got a link to. Artifact, the digital card game from legendary designer Richard Garfield and Valve, Dota 2 and Steam. Richard Garfield is from Monster. I'm not Monster Hunter. <laughs> Magic the Gathering. I've been talking about Monster Hunter too much. Magic the Gathering will be playing playable by attendees of this year's PAX West in Seattle, Washington, August 31st through September 3rd in a game's first public showing. Players will battle each other in a continuous single elimination gauntlet for the right to challenge a champion on the main stage. Everyone who plays will earn artifact merchandise, including signed prints of artwork and two keys 
for free copies of the game when it is released. Targeted for release on Steam on November 28th, 2018, Artifact is designed to give trading card game enthusiasts the deepest gameplay and highest fidelity experience ever in a fantasy card game. Offering more than 280 cards in the shipping set, players will be able to buy and sell cards on the Steam community marketplace. So there you go. It's going to have a price and you'll be able to trade, buy and sell cards on the Steam community marketplace for the dollars, for the Steam dollars, that is, not the real dollars. Your money will be trapped on Steam, but there's always a black market. There always is. So pretty cool. If you haven't seen this game, it's fairly unique. It looks incredibly difficult. You have three lanes of cards, okay? Not traditional lanes like you see in other games out there. But they're act they actually look like mobile lanes, and the entire interface shifts when you move from lane to lane. And it's almost, you know, it's, it's, it's true to the Dota game where you go in, you destroy towers, and you have to ultimately kill your opponent's base. And you have heroes, and you have creeps, and all kinds of stuff. It's a, it's, it's a well-thought-out game, and I'm hoping it succeeds. It could, it could easily fall flat on its face. I, I'm not going to lie. It, it, it's very complicated, very involved. And I don't know if the Dota crowd plays these types of games. I've seen some. Some of the streamers that I watch, they'll play games. Uh, they'll play card games like this. They'll play Hearthstone. They'll play uh, Magic the Gathering. They'll play some of the other games that are out there. Shadow Realm? Shadow something. They'll play these other games out there. Um, but Artifact, we got a release date, November. That's a, that's going to be a busy time of the year, man. There's going to be a lot of Call of Duties and Battlefields. and The end of the year is really busy when it comes to new releases. And... Uh, Artifact is going to be right there with them. Check it out. The press release is on Reddit, November 28th, and mobile is going to be 2019. That confirms a mobile release. I wasn't sure they were going to do mobile, but now I am. Check it out, guys, over on Reddit. They got the details over there. And for our final story, we're going to talk about Fortnite and just the landscape of just esports and video games today. You probably have heard of Ninja. Ninja's, as I, as I heard on an outlet today, the most popular online gamer in the world. That, that carries a lot of weight. The most popular online gamer in the world. Um, to the tune of 100,000 to 200,000 viewers every night that he streams. Millions, like I think he's going on 15, I don't know how many, in the teens of millions of subscribers on YouTube. Untold amount of followers on Twitch. 100 to 200,000 subscribers on Twitch, which all of those people are paying him money. He's featured on CNN, talking about how much, uh, or is it CNBC or CNN? They were asking them, you know, how does it feel to be making millions of dollars as a gamer? Right now, video games is being seen as a legitimate profession. And some of that thanks can be attributed to him because he is projecting that into the limelight. Uh, the story I want to talk about now has to do with just the current generation of upcoming gamers. And this is an article on IGN. <laughs> it reads, parents are getting their kids Fortnite tutors. Now, before you laugh... Before you laugh, you really have to analyze and think about this because even when I was growing up, you know, as a child, we looked up to athletes, you know, as 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 an African-American youth. I looked up to basketball players and football players as being like career mo role models because a lot of them started with the same type of, uh, you know, humble beginnings that I started with. And they rose to the occasion and basically made it in this world because, you know, we looked at them as heroes, especially when you're like eight to you know 12 years old. You're really young. You know, you're easily influenced by these people. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't really have a lot of access to, you know, a successful businessman that looked the same as me. I didn't, I didn't see a lot of that or did the same things that I did. I did play a lot of video games, but I also played a lot of sports. And I think that was my my role model. So if my parents were to come up to me and say, you know, we want to we want to help nurture this. We want to get you some some training, you know, some stuff like that in basketball. You know, I would have jumped all over it. I actually begged for a Michael Jordan tape, which taught you basics. It was a Michael Jordan tutorial, which was like teaching you how to shoot, how to dribble and stuff, how to do drills. And I begged my parents to buy it for me. and They did. And, you know, at the time, I didn't really have serious basketball aspirations. Like I said, I was malleable. I was really, really considering, you know, this as a career because, I, like I said, I didn't have access to, to see a lot of people who were successful in business or, you know, corporate world or in self, self entrepreneurship was like unheard of. To me, a self entrepreneur was a drug dealer when I was growing up. It's like, oh, he owned his own business. He's a drug dealer. You know, that's what I saw around me. That was in my neighborhood. Um, so, 
to to and just fast forwarding to today, kids are seeing Ninja make half a million million dollars easily playing video games. And this just so happens to be their hobby. They play video games. Okay. There's a lot of parents out there that want to nurture their kids, you know, talents. They want to see their children succeed. You know, they may, you know, a lot of parents are strict about getting good grades. You know, where you're good in math and sciences, arts and sciences, uh, I'm sorry, arts, writing, you know, language, uh, good with your hands, vocational stuff, building, fixing things. Whether it be parents are out to nurture their kids' talents and or hobbies. Um, it doesn't surprise me that parents are going to be paying for their kids to get Fortnite tutors because today it is a legitimate and seemingly accessible career move from a parental parental perspective. Now, I'm a live streamer. I'm pretty sure some of you like Buana don't tell me you think that, too. That's easy to do this. Of course not. Just like it's not easy to become a successful actor, become any, successful. Anything in the entertainment industry is incredibly difficult athletes same thing i mean you could be a high school star you could be a college star and then you just everything just stops after that you don't you don't take that next step into the the big time the same is true here it doesn't surprise me that parents are doing this it doesn't surprise me you know because um these parents are probably the same age as me You know, they're probably around the same age as me. We grew up playing video games. We recognize that video games these days is in a lot better place than when they were when we were playing video games. You know, the best thing we had was Starcade, which was a TV game show where we watched people play video games. And we used to scream at the TV because they didn't win that Commodore 64 because they didn't know how to play the stupid game that we knew how to play. (laughs) These days, these kids got esports. They got tournaments. They got millions of dollars on the line by playing video games. Now, a lot of people want to, they want to dismiss this video games as being a legitimate sport. I personally don't care. People are doing things. They're making money doing it. You know, like some people don't believe that live streaming and creating content is a job. People are creating content. They're creating live streams. They're making money doing it. So whether you want to call it a job or not is irrelevant. <laughs> the money is being made and it can support your lifestyle. It can support your family. If you have a family. So, you know, the semantics are kind of laughable at this point. But the game, I mean, Epic has contributed. They, they, they basically have, have committed to millions of dollars to give to esports players these days. So what parent out there, I mean, even when I was growing up, a lot of parents would dump money into their kids so they could possibly be a football star, be a basketball star, be a track star, you know, be a tennis star, be, you know, a chess star. I don't know. They might be playing chess. They might be doing debate club. I don't know. They might want to get into Harvard. They, they will invest in their children, especially if the kids want it. You got to think about that. I mean, some people look at these parents as being like mean and you know, overbearing and stuff. A lot of these parents are just trying to nurture what their kids want. And there's a legitimate claim. Like I said, when I was growing up, it wasn't really there. Now there's a legitimate claim that, hey, you can make a living playing video games if you're really good at it. And not more, not just make a living, but you can be a millionaire by these examples. Of course, they're not going to be easy to get, but the opportunities are there and they're arising. Twitch is growing. YouTube is growing. Mixer is growing. This is only getting bigger. Last week, the Overwatch Finals was on national television. You can't say that happened when we were kids, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Some of you weren't even born. I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself here. You can't say that, though. Like I said, we had Starcade. <laughs> that was it. Um, so check the story out, guys. I mean, the article itself doesn't have a whole lot in it, but I just looked at the title and it got me thinking about this whole, you know, esports craze. Which some may say is getting worse. Some may say is declining uh, because, you know, StarCraft 2 isn't as big as it used to be. Uh, CSGO is kind of on a decline. Call of Duty kind of fizzled out a little bit. Um, and I think uh, um, I think some of the, the, the Tom Clancy uh, Rainbow Six stuff is starting to pick up a little bit. Fortnite is picking up. PUBG is picking up. And the Battle Royale craze. But when these guys die out, something else is going to pick up the slack. Because advertisers... Not only technology advertisers, a lot of other advertisers are beginning to recognize 
that there are people with money in their pockets watching these kids play games. I mean, if you watch Ninja stream for for an hour, you will see hundreds, sometimes even thousands of dollars go the way into this guy's pocket watching him do this. Advertisers go, OK, they got that money. I'm going to stick my product in their face. Maybe they'll buy that. It's not it's not a stupid idea. It's actually smart business. So while we can laugh at this, you see this article headline, you can laugh at it, sit back, analyze it and think about it. It makes a lot of sense. Now, will I if I had a child, would I would I give them uh, a Fortnite tutor? You know, if they didn't ask for it, I probably wouldn't. You know, it's just that's just me. That's something that if I were doing it, they would have to you know ask or beg. And I'd have to see the potential because, I, you know, I know I'd, I could see potential. I could see people playing Fortnite. I know I know if they got the uh, this stuff. I know that I know if they got the stuff or not. But uh, it, 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 it definitely is something that you would consider, especially if your child wants it. Now, by the time you guys listen to this, have kids, there may be a different game out there. There may be a different type of esports thing. You know, Blizzard is doing a great job of legitimizing esports. They are taking esports to the professional level that we have never seen before. They are taking it to levels to where the NBA and the NFL and the, and the, and the um, uh, the uh, you know the baseball, hockey, NHL. All these people are taking this stuff to the professional level with agents and contracts and benefits and 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 salaries they're taking it to that level and they're taking it to a format to where it's acceptable by people who play and watch other sports like basketball football hockey and baseball so that's paving the way for other people and other outlets and other video games out there to do the same thing so by the time you guys have kids or if you have kids now by the time they grow up a lot of the work will have been done and you may be heavily, heavily considering giving your kids some tutoring and some video games, giving them some lessons, some video games, something to think about. Check it out, guys. Over on IGN.com, they got the details. Details. Parents are getting their kids Fortnite tutors. Is it crazy or not? Let me know in the chat. Wait, we're not chatting. Let me know in the comments. Tommy. And that concludes episode 128 of Game Chat 1. I want to thank you all for listening today. Please, please, if you can, follow me on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Buona. I post my musings about what's going on in the life of Castle Day Buona. Also, I post when I go live on my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash Buona. We stream every day except Wednesdays and Sundays at 4 p.m. now. Brand new schedule, 4 p.m. Been playing a lot of No Man's Sky. We promise, I promise, that I was going to be playing some more single-player games like Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and also... Some Horizon Zero Dawn, but uh, <laughs> No Man's Sky got, got that addiction factor going on. YouTube.com slash Buona. It's where I post videos. I've been posting regularly this show and the occasional video on Wednesdays once a week. And I want to announce now that we're definitely going to be pumping more promotion into our Patreon. We have a Patreon at Patreon.com slash Buona. It's been there with one to five dollar, one, five, ten and twenty dollar pledges. We've we've recently increased the pledges to account for I think fifty and a hundred dollars if people want to give more. Uh, I used to use a site called GameWiz in conjunction with my Twitch stream to kind of do the same. We're going to be using Patreon solely now. Uh, we're going to be sunsetting GameWiz and going over to Patreon. So you're going to be hearing a lot more about Patreon. Uh, I'm going to be updating my bumpers on my videos. This one won't have it, but I'll be updating my bumpers with thanks to all the patrons and trying to get their names on there. And uh, we're going to be having regular posts, regular newsletters on the Patreon page for the pa- for the patrons. Also, we have special Discord stuff for those guys as well. We're not going to be doing some of the special incentives that some of the other channels do. We're going to keep it simple because I don't want to promise things that I cannot deliver. But I do want to give you things that I that you know fit within the realm of Cassidy Twitch Television slash Buona TV slash YouTube dot com slash Twitter dot com slash Buona. All that. Instagram.com <laughs> slash one. All right, guys, you have a great, great week. I'll see you all same time, same station next Wednesday for another fun filled episode of Game Chat. We want to have a good one. Take care, guys. Hey, guys, thanks for watching the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And make sure you click the bell to be notified. Otherwise, you ain't going to see this video. Wait, how did you see this video? I'm, okay, bye. <laughs>